for Shane Dawson, a once canceled yet currently thriving YouTube celebrity, discussing conspiracy theories has been a pillar of his brand since the early 2010s, as was wearing musty t-shirts and being criminally inappropriate with children. Sorry planet, this was back when we millennials felt the need to embrace the very worst aspects of popular culture. But you have to understand, we were just acting out after our collective childhoods were suddenly plunged into a 24 hour news cycle of traumatic imagery and financial stress. For example, we ate our lucky charms while watching the live coverage of the hunt for Saddam Hussein, which none of us could process for another six years until it bubbled to the surface as that bizarre 2012 trend where we wanted to print mustaches on everything. Saddam Hussein mustaches, I believe. We were weird for that. Like, God, just find something to get addicted to and shut the f up, kids. Then again, kids today have equally weird obsessions that come and go, which provide Shane Dawson with a never-ending source of trending topics that he embarrassingly tries to co-opt, that he will rebuild his whole life around every few months due to his need for internet relevancy that makes me feel even more uncomfortable than waking up from one of my Saddam Hussein sex dreams. Damn, I think I'm the problem with America. But I'm in good company. If you're to believe Shane Dawson's conspiracy theories that we're breaking down today, like the secretly nefarious Stanley Cup craze, even more paranoid misunderstandings of the processed food industry, and just general fear-mongering about future technology that Shane has edited together from several actually informative news segments. So grab some popcorn and give a good morning kiss to your framed photo of Saddam Hussein's mustache. Yep, I hear it. I promise I'll talk to my therapist about it. And get ready for the world to conspire against you in another Shane the Pain Dawson installment of Clip Breakdown. Hello television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we dive into our favorite movies, TV movies, and other such content here on the web, and we break it into pieces like it is a conspiracy so that we can look at each individual clip and clomp and clump of factoids and debunk them, or just generally decide if they're worthy of the internet, which apparently anything is, or if they deserve the Saddam Hussein treatment being hanged on a noose. God, why do I keep going back to that well, Nicholas? Let's just move on. It's been a minute since I sat down and shot a video. If you can't tell, that's why I'm talking terrorism. Anyway, we all know Shane Dawson loves a conspiracy theory to the point where he will like intentionally not find out the truth about things so that he can position them as a conspiracy theory. And we have a lot of that going on today. First, thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Rocket Money. I'll tell you more about them later. After a quick little ad that he does for SeatGeek, you'll see Shane Dawson is right back to his old room with his same t-shirt that he always wears for these videos. The weird ways he tries to brand himself. I'm like, that shirt is stupid. He's always wearing his pig t-shirt, his merch, and every other scene, but then this random segment, he's always wearing his weird red shirt. I'm like, whatever. I don't even have, maybe I do the same thing too, but I don't even have the brain capacity to, to think about it right now. Because when I see Shane come on camera right now, there's something that's a little off. Tell me if you see it. Hey, what's up you guys? It's been way too long. Welcome back. This is gonna sound paranoid, but I don't think that's the real Shane Dawson. I think that's some digital avatar created by artificial intelligence that's trying desperately to appear charismatic and personable, but not quite as desperately as the real Shane Dawson does. And that's the giveaway. Technology can't yet replicate that level of pick me energy, but nice try, you deep fake dumb f when we review that clip frame by frame, you can see a brief instant where there was a glitch in this imposter's face filter, revealing the stoic plasticine visage of the most terrifying evil AI generated antagonist ever known to the modern age. Meet the unknown. You know, from that unlicensed Willy Wonka experience in Glasgow. What is that? It's the unknown. On a positive note, I'm glad Shane's work is finally reaching a point where he can add in all of these layers and Easter eggs, like he did with that super underused digital static effect there in the lower third title. It says, subliminal message. <laughs> Although I guess I was a little disappointed to learn that even Shane's subliminal message lacks any sort of actual message and is more of an opportunity for him to prove that he has a surface level understanding of what certain words mean. And also to show off that he knows how to do this with his editing software. Ah, ooh, look at me. I'm what happens when you add the wrong file extension to a JPEG. So cool. Definitely build your whole entire brand around that aesthetic. And yes, I know I have TV static in the beginning and end of my videos 
I do it smartly though. I do it smartly. <laughs> and you're jealous of how smartly. Also, he shows all this B-roll of like horror movies and stuff. I'm like, that's not a real video. It has nothing to do with what you're showing. It's just creepy imagery. Ugh. But anyway, he starts by telling us all about the Stanley Cup craze. If you're not in Gen Z or like on TikTok, it's those big tumblers, metal tumblers that all the girls and kids in school want. They're expensive, they're like 35 bucks. The limited edition ones are expensive. He has a $400 one covered in emerald crystals in this video and I'm like, okay, tell me that you're out of touch and also maybe a pile without telling me. Shane did not escape the Stanley Cup craze. Like every other 12 year old girl in the world, he needs to be seen as cool by the fourth graders. Everyone in school basically has them. And all this hysteria over a cup. I got a Stanley! I never realized how many of these you've had. <laughs> oh, hey Chris. Hi. Sorry. You caught me right in the middle of my morning worship. <laughs> <laughs> so as you can see, I might have bought into the hype. <laughs> oh God, Shane, can you get a consultation to see if it's possible to have a facial expression removed from your face? Because that dentures out, Muppet mouth, how the Grinch stole my baby from Walmart smile of yours is not doing you any favors. I get that by now it's just an ingrained habit meant to enhance your mediocre sense of humor, but you could have started trying to get rid of that when it first popped up as a meme over three years ago. The mean-spirited jokes are your signal to change the behavior. Have you ever been to high school? But you did nothing to change the behavior. So now here I am and I make my money by pointing out how you're making yourself look like Spike from the land before time. Welcome to the butterfly effect, bitch. That's your fault. Oh, and why am I not surprised that Shane has made his entire personality out of this Stanley Cup fad that's popular amongst preteens? This is a person who is so beholden to the approval of the under 18 demographic on TikTok, he will jump on literally any bandwagon that he thinks will make him appear more small and baby. And that includes whining, waddling, and piss-filled diapers, I assume. Anyway, Shane goes on to point out that this is the new cup du jour, which we would know because he spent probably like $1,000 on these cups and it's like everything with Shane. He like did this with Musical.ly. He did this with the Visco Girl. Anything that's like really trending amongst the preteen circuit, he'll make a video about it, but also like try to become it in some way. And I find that a little sad. So that's how he knows that the Stanley Cup is what everybody's talking about. And it went viral. Cause like, I remember the Hydro Flask being what every teen girl wanted like last year. But this year their sales have skyrocketed in part due to a viral video where a car fire took place and the woman showed like, oh, my Stanley Cup survived this car fire and there was still frozen ice inside of it the next day. So that got the cup, lots of viral attention. I don't know why kids love it so much. It's kind of cute. I don't even carry this around in real life. I just drink my own spit out of my glands. And that's enough for me, cause I'm an adult, a dehydrated, sad adult. Anyway, Shane points out that they got the new director of marketing or something that Crocs had and Crocs were super lame amongst the Gen Z crowd until they weren't. And it's like the same kind of theory like of how they hired a TikTok agent. The point is Shane is giving us no new information here. In fact, he's just repeating the information that he also shows us from the source material that this whole video is based on. He hired an agency that was dedicated to helping Stanley build their TikTok. So just a few months ago, they tapped an agency as their dedicated TikTok agency. This is something that not a lot of companies have done before. Which is something that not a lot of brands are doing at the moment. As fascinating as those facts are, I probably only needed to hear them once. Not once from you and once from the news story that you plagiarized this information from. He didn't even change the wording. And I've mentioned before that I believe Shane's videos often accomplish an unethical amount amount of the storytelling by using pre-existing videos and clips. And that's coming from somebody whose whole f***ing YouTube channel is based on clips. It's one half of the sign. But I'm afraid Shane is really letting the redundancy of his work shine here. Like he's now fully telling on himself for repeating the same sentences that he heard in the source material, posing the same questions that science has already given us the answers to by conducting experiments that were already posted on YouTube as long as three months ago. Look at these videos. There's like people lighting car fires to see if the Stanley thing was a hoax months ago. Because again, the lady who like had her car
car fire and her Stanley survived it, was later contacted by Stanley via TikTok and they gave her a new car. Like, so they took advantage of the viral moment. And Shane is basically trying to insinuate that because they hired a TikTok agency, this must all be some grand scheme that he's orchestrating. But what else is Shane adding to the conversation here that gives him the right to amplify all of this content to a much larger audience without giving any credit to the original creators? Like, I would be pissed if I was one of those people who did the Stanley Cup fire experiment who got 2.5 thousand views and then Shane comes out and uses it as b-roll and gets millions of views. These creators at best inspire his work but at worst make up half of the runtime of his videos but then he just adds in some over dramatic music and channel changing sound effects. Well listen to this mama because this is me changing the channel. You suck. In usual Shane fashion, he gathers three of the people he knows out of the four. That's Ryland, his camera operator, Chris, Ryland's podcast co-host, Chrissy. And then we also meet Spencer, his producer, who I already know because I looked into the credits on one of his videos and saw his Instagram. I won't say that again because that sounds weird. I don't do that much research, okay? It takes like three clicks. It's still more research than Shane does. He lights a bonfire, they throw the cup in, it burns, so earth shattering. Oh my God, it's losing. Oh, the top is not Look at it, Chris. Oh my God. Oh my God. The handle. Gone. No way. Literally gone. No way. Oh my God, it's about to fall off. <gasps> Just to be clear, Shane and Chris are allowed to react however they want to seeing this plastic cup melt. After all, it's not illegal to have a small life. However, if you see that the tumbler you bought at Barnes & Noble is not covered by a magical protection spell and react as though it's the sequel to 9-11, then your work just might benefit from a little more perspective. Shane concludes this segment by implying that he believes Stanley staged the viral car fire video for attention, but adds that he legally can't prove it. And Shane, that's the first correct thing you've said literally this whole day. I'm not even sure that legally you'd be allowed to enter the courthouse with your charred belongings and your musty t-shirt. And I'll once again venture to add piss-soaked diaper to the list, just cause it seems right. You have proven literally nothing. Is it like illogical conclusions are the only thing you can jump to without stressing out your ankle replacements? I'm not being shady. He really had an ankle replacement, okay? You didn't prove that ice could not survive a car fire in a Stanley Cup like we saw in the original video. What if that cup was never in direct flames, which it doesn't seem like it would have been since the paint wasn't burned off. Oh, and furthermore, you didn't prove that the TikTok agency hired by Stanley had anything to do with that car fire video that went viral. You just implied that it was possible that they were connected. But couldn't it also be that the cup survived that car fire by luck? And then the TikTok agency like told the president to get on camera and give that woman a free car, which is exactly the kind of thing you would expect a TikTok agency to do in order to take advantage of a viral video. It got them even more headlines, it maximized their publicity, and indirectly it led to like the success they're having today. That's also a really plausible answer to what happened, but you're not gonna bring that up. You're just gonna leave us with like, I can't legally prove that they faked this whole thing and it's a hoax, but it's a hoax and it's a hoax and I believe it. It's like, okay, okay, baby girl, I love that for you. At this point, I'm convinced they will just pump out anything to put onto our screens these days. There's no getting around it. Content is king during this age. And the more of this mindless stuff that I consume, the more I realize what a drain it is on the Earth's resources. Like all of this requires time and money and it's such a waste. And if there's one thing I hate, it's wasting time and money. I don't like when my eyeballs are doing it and I don't like when my bank account is doing it either. I just spent like two and a half hours the other day because I had one of those sudden middle of the night panic attacks that I had all of these recurring subscriptions that were charging my bank account for things that I don't even use. And sure enough, I saw that I was being charged $12.99 a month for some iPhone app that helped me edit photos, which I haven't used for months. That's why I'm so grateful for the sponsor of today's video, Rocket Money. Rocket Money is also the app you need to save more and manage money better. It's the personal finance app that helps you cancel subscriptions, lower bills, and set budgets that you can stick to. It makes each of us that much closer to achieving financial freedom. I use Rocket Money to safely and securely identify recurring charges on my bank account, and then it even cancels unwanted subscriptions for me. No calling customer service or writing emails. It's just a couple of taps and it's done. Rocket Money has helped save its customers up to $740 a year with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. But some recurring charges you just can't get around like 
bills and utilities, but Rocket Money even helps you there. I can just upload my bills by taking a photo, whether it's an internet bill, phone bill, and Rocket Money will actually negotiate a lower rate on my behalf, which I did not even know you could just have something do that. Life suddenly feels so much brighter. And I'm definitely a set it and forget it type of girly, so I love being able to set up smart savings. I can choose the amount and the frequency, and then Rocket Money will automatically deposit it into a savings account for me. Take control of your finances today. Go to Rocket Money com slash Nick Deramio to get started for free. Next, Shane gets into the next buzzword from TikTok, the Sephora kids, talking about how Gen Z seems to be aging faster than Gen my Gen, what is it? Millennials? He posits that is because the technology, the blue light technology, the crippling effects of like looking at our phone our whole lives. These are kids who are on iPads forever. And he introduces one of those like futurists who creates a 3D render of what we're gonna look like in the future. They I don't say how far off in the future, but it feels soon. It feels like now. I'd like you to meet Mindy. Mindy is what we are going to evolve into because of our addiction to technology. Hunchbacked, tech claw, 90 degree elbow, tech neck, a thicker skull. That really doesn't seem so extreme to me. I basically evolved to look like that just by flying basic economy from New York to LA. Mindy, love, get yourself a THC gummy, book a 45 minute massage in K-Town, you're gonna be good as new. Also, maybe grow that hair out. No one's even gonna notice your weird head shape. And honestly, Mindy is still serving. I don't care if evolution turns my whole head into one solid skull bone surrounding a small cluster of brain cells. Just tell me how to make sure I get Mindy's small perky breasts. I can already tell the future hunchback version of me is gonna be so popular. It looks like that carpal tunnel tech claw will also be great for giving hand jobs. We love a multi-use product. You may remember in a past conspiracy theory video that I've covered, Shane went into like the fact that Walmart cheese is not real cheese. It's like a prepared cheese product. Basically stuff we all already know about craft singles, but here he is going at it again, doing the same exact topic, but ice cream. He has this thing where he like has to attack certain foods like he did with the Chuck E. Cheese pizza. This preposterous claim that like they Frankenstein different slices of leftover pizza together as though that wouldn't be like a huge liability for them. But now he's going after not just ice cream, but frozen desserts, which he didn't realize they were that different. We've talked about how crazy the food world is. You know how on cheese slices, it doesn't actually say cheese. It says cheese product. Prepared cheese product. That's because that ain't cheese. Oh, and it doesn't melt no matter how hard you try. Listen to that. And this is a new one, drumstick ice cream. Except it's not ice cream because legally they can't call it that. This ice cream is so fake that they can't even call it ice cream. It's called a frozen dessert instead. Like what the f is in that? <laughs> they can't call it ice cream. <laughs> Once again, the term is not about what's in the food, drain clogs in. It's about what's not in the food, cream. They can't call it ice cream because it doesn't have cream in it. I swear, Shane is getting a lot of conspiracy theory mileage just by refusing to learn about food labeling standards. Like nobody's conspiring, baby girl. The FDA created these identifiers for accurate labeling because they want consumers to be informed about what they're eating, which seems to be the exact opposite of what you want or have ever done. It took 13 milliseconds of Googling to come across Tim Krause of Mammoth Creameries saying on allrecipes.com that to be ice cream, there has to be a minimum amount of butter fat and then milk solids non-fat called MSNF. And the product has to have a certain density measured by weight per gallon. So it literally has to be like thick and heavy with cream to be called ice cream. That's why you see premium ice cream. It has a higher milk fat content. And then you see frozen desserts, which are usually made with vegetable oils or some other non-dairy fats, which doesn't mean it's like the worst thing in the world. I mean, ice cream is not healthy anyway. So if you're eating a frozen dessert made from vegetable oil, Yes, it still has tons of sugar, it's hyper-processed, but it's also non-dairy. So that means certain people who can't eat dairy can't eat a drumstick. I'm not saying it's great. I'm not saying go and eat all the f***ing ice cream and don't eat frozen dessert. But Shane is not saying anything of the sort. He's like, what are they putting in there? Rat piss and vomit chunks? No. Now I understand that the FDA realizes those definitions are probably not common knowledge to everybody who reads frozen dessert on a product that they previously assumed to be ice cream. Then again, the FDA probably assumed that the consumer would take the 30 seconds to look up what that term means rather than creating an hour long alarmist YouTube video making wild speculations as though Google 
doesn't exist. I just hate how Shane poses these nefarious questions like, what the f are they putting in this so they can't call it ice cream? And then he just completely ignores the fact that there is a conclusive answer. And he could share that whole process with us, the whole research process, and then that journey of discovery where we, he's like, and then I learned it's about milk fat. And I look, talk to this dairy farmer who points out like how much healthier it is to eat real ice cream, whatever his f propaganda point is, right? But that would make it feel like an actual documentary and not just like making us scared of whatever. And that's where the missing 30 minutes of this whole fucking video is if you're gonna make it an hour long. Also, did I just hear him say that craft singles don't melt no matter how hard you try? As he showed a video of the melting, are you gonna say that craft singles don't melt? Because the three grilled cheese sandwiches that I used to eat every day during a months long depressive episode in my 20s would beg to differ. It's like designed to melt easily that cheese. I don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, he goes into how like the great value, again with the Walmart slander, like we get it. You don't shop at Walmart normally except to buy ice cream. Stop talking shit about every fucking food at Walmart. I guess the other one was dollar value, like basically vilifying these bargain foods that many people need to buy to eat and sustain their lives because they don't make millions of dollars off bullshit content, but whatever. The great value ice cream sandwiches don't melt. And it's because again, those aren't ice cream sandwiches. They're, they say they're like fucking dessert sandwiches or something. It's low quality ice cream that people who are experienced in ice cream tasting say is gummy because it has a lot of cellulose gum, things that help make it have a creamy mouthfeel, but also that help it hold its form when it's like all the liquids melted out. You can see in this ice cream sandwich that he leaves in the cupboard, it's melted. Like the liquid has all melted out. The soggy paper towel proves it, but it's held its shape. So like if you touch it, it still looks like an ice cream sandwich more or less, but it's still melted. It's just cellulose gum that's holding its shape and he doesn't even bring that up. Not that I care. I'm not trying to defend ice cream. It's just like, don't pose an argument with a well researched and well available to everyone like described answer and not share that part as well. Like, why are you just kicking up mud and causing these brands grief amongst preteens who are not going to do their own research either? Because they think Shane is, but he's not. He doesn't know what research is. He has a smooth brain and an ugly face. That last part was editorialization. Cellulose gum. Cellulose gum. Anyway, for this last portion, it's a little beyond us. Like, it's a very advanced topic that I wouldn't expect anybody to know how to understand unless they read mm, one to one and a half pages from any young adult novel ever. So let's bring in the big gun, Shane's older brother. We are here with my brother, Jared. Hello, everybody. And uh, he's about to break down one of the scariest, most intense, dangerous theories of all time. So this is something I've been wanting to talk about for a long time. Uh, but it's even too confusing for me to understand. Even you to understand? What? Shane, no, I won't believe it. Not you, with your encyclopedic knowledge of things you just read about 10 minutes ago. Not you, the learned sage who can't figure out how ice cream works. The one who got legitimately scared when they saw something catch on fire after they set it on fire. Not you being unaware. Also, what kind of millionaire? Shane is worth like $7 million. Frame your posters in your movie room. I see this Titanic poster and this Scream poster and I want to shit myself because there's double-sided tape to the wall like, girl, this is your home. I would never hang an unframed poster on my wall because I'm not in college. It's okay if you do that. I mean, it's elitist of me to think that everyone can buy a, a poster frame, but Shane can buy a poster frame. I proved it by watching this video and giving him enough profit to buy a poster frame. Anyway, Shane goes on to talk about how, no, Jared, I'm sorry, goes on to talk about how basically like under Colorado, as they've already discussed on this channel, there's like a series of tunnels. They're preparing for this like sort of new world order where they're gonna move a bunch of people underground to survive some cataclysmic event that they're going to describe as like an alien invasion. They're priming us to get ready for this alien invasion by starting to have Pentagon hearings about alien abductions. They're taking things more seriously in the government. We're getting these leaks about aliens maybe being real. That's all, according to this theory, conditioning us so that we are falling for it as soon as the government stages an alien attack in order to to regain control of the population. And the evidence for that, I mean, you can Google it. It may be true, I don't know, I don't know. Probably not at this point. Like at this point, there's so many theories about that. They would probably abandon it and come up with something even better. Like they're like, oh, the sun exploded. You all. We've already been in the cheese caves forever. So, but anyway, Jared is trying to let us know, like they're trying to legitimize the idea of aliens abducting us from the way that they call them UFOs. 
So it used to be unidentified flying objects, but now they've restated it as UAPs. Unidentified aerial phenomena. So they even have like a more legit name for it at this point, you know? Where now it's like, no, we got a real name for these things. They're UAPs. UFO kind of made it feel goofy and a little bit conspiratory. Honestly, I don't feel like anybody on screen right now has a great sense of when something sounds goofy or conspiratory. Otherwise, both of them would have been finding alternative things to say for like the last 45 minutes. For those who don't know, Shane and Rylan just brought two newborn sons into the world via surrogate, and I'm pretty sure Shane had both Goofy and Conspiratory on the short list of potential baby names. That's how bad his understanding is of optics. I forget what names he actually went with. Something like Phoebe from Friends and Rickshaw, I think. Yeah. Also, Jared, there's nothing inherently more goofy about the term UFO compared to UAP. To us, maybe, because like UFO has been around longer, more decades, so it's easier to associate it with like vintage sci-fi movies or flying saucers and little green men. But that's just because we've heard it all of our childhoods in association with those things. By definition, UAP, it's no different. Like I'm pretty sure that name change wasn't a PR move to make us more afraid of aliens, but more because like unidentified aerial phenomena is broad enough to encompass more of the types of events that people report to the government, like lighting things, like when there's a projection in the sky, like a spotlight. Oh, I think that's a UFO, but really it's just a, I couldn't explain it. It's an aerial phenomena because it's the light hitting the clouds or like weather anomalies. Like if you see the Northern Lights, I'm sure many people call in every day when they see Northern Lights to be like, there's aliens in the sky. And it's like, no, that's just the fog. So I don't know why he's like saying like, now it's like a more legit sounding name. It's like, it's more legit to you because it's different and it's more specific slash broad to what like people see. But they talk about how it's like, oh no, they have this secret technology to project all sorts of three 3D holograms into the sky. So they're going to project an alien attacking us and then use their secret energy lasers to like burn cities to the ground. But the super elite are gonna move into these pre-built bunkers downstairs. And like, then they'll start over with this like easily controlled smaller population with a unified world government. Again, I could see it happening. I don't trust the government any more than these two idiots do. However, I do think that there wouldn't be all of these like theories floating around about what's gonna happen that anybody could find without even half Googling it. Yes, mass panic counts for something. And if buildings are blowing up and I see a UFO, I'm gonna run. But like, if someone then were later to tell me like, oh, it's the government faking that sh I'd be like, oh yeah, I mean, yeah, I've heard of that. And many other people would too, but whatever. The point is many of us are gonna die, a few of us are gonna live, unless we can trick the government into thinking that we're easily controlled now. Like we won't believe what they say about UFOs when the UFOs come. We're gonna know that it's them. So don't even try it, buster. That's Jared's advice for us right now. Instead of waiting for a global threat to ban us all together to get on the same page, we do that now. And instead of submitting to the powers that be, we show them we're not fallen for it. My thought is we just need to question more things. We need to find some kind of a purpose that makes us feel whole and feel unified and not feel like we have to resort to what they're doing which is just decimating everything, you know? These two bearded turkey meatballs are right. The only way to prevent a singular world government from rising up and annihilating most of the world's population under the guise of an alien attack while the fearful survivors hide out beneath the Colorado airport in a series of underground tunnels is if every single human being on earth can unite together as one and gather around the television and watch season 11 of The Masked Singer, I guess, the instructions are are not clear. Oh well, it's probably too late anyway. I can practically hear those secret CIA energy cannons charging up as we speak for our extra crispy finish. All because no one had the organizational skills to form a worldwide group chat that would have allowed billions of us to rise up against the new world order that may or may not exist whenever it tries to control us by threatening us with an extraterrestrial world order that may or may not exist. God, the path to world peace seems really complicated, but it sort of feels like we were almost on the right path when Kendall Jenner handed that ice cold Pepsi to a cop wearing riot gear at that protest against bad vibes. You know, the bad vibes matter protest. Kendall, come back. We're ready for your message now. Except make mine a Diet Coke and a glass with ice and some lemon if you have it. Thanks so much, sweetie. Otherwise, I welcome our new sky cannon overlords. Burn the house down, sis. Cause I cannot deal with another conspiracy theory from Shane Dawson. Not only are they under-researched, but they also feel like laced with privilege and sort of like 
like racism throughout the entire thing. Like there's classism involved at the very least. At worst, he's stealing content from other creators, not giving them any credit, and then getting a lot more money for it. So, ugh, just, it's grossing me out. I don't like it. I don't like Shane Dawson. I don't know if that's come through in the ethos of my channel. I don't buy his bull and I hope that you don't either, but let me know what your feelings were in the comments below. If you're the three Shane Dawson fans who still come and watch this channel, hi, I love you, thank you so much. And if you're the other people, I love you, love you, love you so much. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. Make sure you click that subscribe button right over here, that way you never miss new videos from me. I'm uploading as many as I can. I know I've been struggling to get them out regularly, but I would love it if you could still subscribe. I'm gonna be trying to turn this ship around. Oh my God, I swear, it's mental health. It's mental health. You have to feel bad for me. Also, make sure you hit that notification bell icon and you'll always be the first to know when I'm beaming me down Scotty to light your kids on fire and say it's aliens. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you so much for diving into this frozen dessert with me today. I will see you next time. Yeah.